Life can knock you off and sometimes you question your faith, you question your, your belief, even if you're a deacon in the church, even if you're whatever you are in church. There are troubles and tribulations that come and you question your faith. Whatever time God eventually does that thing or you know, takes off that prayer request, that is the perfect time. And it took me 20 something years of my life to understand that. We know, we know what it means when you're trying to give God condition that this is, I want this job now. I want to get married today. I want to, in fact, this year will not pass me by. If your faith and your hope is all encompassing in the mind or the competence or the magnificence of God, he will do it. He will come through. God will come through. Hey guys, how you doing? It's your girl Joy here. Today, I had lead in my spirit to make a video about the waiting season. Guys, it takes a lot to wait on God. I know a lot of you must have heard it time and time again. Oh, we're faithing it true. We're, you know, we're waiting on God for something. Whatever it is you're waiting on God for. Even if it's as little as getting your own car or getting married or, I mean, getting married is not, it's not a small fit. It's a lot. It's a life changing decision. But I'm just saying, no matter how little, whatever it is you're waiting on God for, it requires a lot of mental, spiritual, and physical strength to actually allow God take the lead. Before I proceed, I am a Christian, um, born Christian, baptized, born again in Christ by the special grace of God. So all my life, I've had that understanding of waiting on God for whatever it is you want, okay? I don't believe in doing things my way or taking the bull by the horn. Because Christianity has taught me that whatever we're looking for in life, whatever you're wanting, it is only God that will give it to you without asking for anything in return. You know, in my life, in the 20 something years of my life, I've had to think about the littlest things. By nature or by personality, I'm an overthinker. I think about the littlest things. So, say for example, I want to go into a friendship with someone. I think about it. I think about the worst that can come out of it. I think about the best things that can come out of it. I put my expectations sometimes too high or too low. And in these decisions, be it making a friend or just applying for a job or as little as even getting a house or making a decision, no matter how minor it is, sometimes we don't even involve God because we feel like God doesn't have to be a part of it. Is it not just to get a house? Is it not just to get a car? Why do I have to pray about it? Why do I have to talk to God about it? Why do I have to wait on God for it? And we forget that it's in the little things. You see that little thing that you feel like you don't want to involve God in? That little thing you feel like God doesn't have to be a part of. Those are actually the big things. Those are the things that God comes forth and makes a, diff a name for himself in a different way. You know, being in the waiting season of my life has taught me that <sighs> at the end of the day, God's will will be done. The Igbos will say, The will of God will triumph. The will of God will supersede at the end of the day. Speaking of the waiting season, there are times in my life where I've had to wait on God for many things and trust me when i say waiting on god i mean like a whole long list of things i want god to do for me a whole long list of things i'm hoping that god will come through for did he come through hell yeah he did sometimes even earlier than i thought and sometimes later but guess what Whatever God's time is, whatever time God eventually does that thing or takes off that prayer request, that is the perfect time. And it took me 20 something years of my life to understand that. Now let's talk about what happens in the waiting. Let me use myself as an example. I remember when I wanted my husband to come to Australia. I mean, we got married, he was supposed to come together, but life happened. So I had to come alone and he was supposed to join me and it was supposed to be for just three months. We we're supposed to be apart for just three months and it turned out to be 
almost two years and i remember in that phase where i was really praying that i wanted this to happen immediately because it was he was doing it for other people other people were getting their testimonies people were you know traveling all over the world but my husband couldn't okay and i remember praying fervently and asking god to do it now i wanted it now now if you don't do it now then you know and as a christian we know we know what it means when you're trying to give god condition that ah if you don't do this thing now this is i want this job now i want to get married today i want to in fact this year will not pass me by i want this today it's okay to ask after all the bible says whatever you ask in my name i will do but also remember that the ways of god are not the ways of man the heart of god is not the heart of man certain things that we want at certain times we don't get it not because god cannot give us remember he has riches everything we want in abundance that's what he said in his word he has everything we want even before we were conceived even before we got into our mother's home he knew us he knew what our life would be he knew our needs our wants everything we want so it's not like he doesn't have it but i feel like being in the waiting teaches us patience and that is one virtue I lack as a person and I'm gonna be upfront with you guys I'm not a patient person being in the waiting has taught me to be patient with God to be honest I'm not always in fact sometimes I'm like a big a big a big I don't want to hear that but that is what being in the waiting means it's almost like you're in a queue maybe a very long queue and you need to uh, use the restroom right and that's the only restroom there you don't have a choice you have to stay you have to wait your turn until it's your turn to go use the restroom right that is how waiting on god is if you're a christian and you believe that god is everything you know you don't have a plan b someone like me when i trust god for something when i want something and i go on my knees and say god i want this i don't have a plan b what that means is if you don't do it for me i don't quit me if you don't do it for me it's all over you know what I mean? Being in the waiting has taught me patience in a way that kind of restructured my mindset towards how I see things, how I see God and how I see my life as a person. Before I used to think anything I want. I mean, don't get me wrong. God gives me anything I want. But sometimes God puts you in the waiting to teach you a lesson or to give you the biggest share which is something I, did, I didn't know until my late 20s. Sometimes you have to be on the waiting list just so that your weight is an inspiration or a motivation to somebody out there. You hear testimonies of people saying, oh, I waited 10 years to have a baby. Oh, I tried to have a baby for 15 years. I've been waiting on God for 15 years. And you're like, 15 whole years. But sometimes they wait. They may have tried all sorts of ways to have babies, but it didn't work. At the end of the day, you realize that God is the author and the finisher. He is the only one that will give you that thing you cannot give yourself. And which boils down to being patient and waiting. Another thing that comes up when you talk about waiting or being patient while in the waiting is your attitude in the season of waiting. This is something I struggled with to be honest what is your attitude when you're waiting on god for something what is your approach towards life what is your mindset towards like what's your what do you think of god what do you think of yourself what do you think of people around you when you're waiting on god for something are you in that state of oh i'm depressed it can't work or what are you gearing towards when you see yourself waiting Sometimes we get lost in the fire, the same fire that was supposed to refine us and make us better. The same fire that was supposed to make us raw gold, that was supposed to make us shine even brighter. Some of us go through the fire and never come out to the other side. Some of us go through the fire and die in the fire because we do not understand the dynamics of waiting on God. We do not understand what it means to go through a season in life to be honest with you no matter what you're waiting on god for there would always be an end to it be it a job be it a house be it children be it finance whatever be it a life partner there would always be an end point to that problem just like my pastor always say every problem has an expiry date okay so while you're waiting for that expiry of that problem what are you doing what's your attitude 
in your waiting season? Are you living a life of gratitude? Are you living your life like truly God is taking care of me? Or you're living your life like it's all over, it's not going to happen? Or you're living your life envying others, comparing others to yourself? And that is also one thing I want to touch on. I know this is being me digressive, but this is also something I want to touch on. While you're in your waiting season, do not compare yourself or your journey with any other persons. This is also something I am learning as a person. It would your journey would never ever be the same as someone else. Even people who came to this world as twins, their destinies are different. Their timings are different. You see one gets a job before the other, the other got married before another, the other relocated to this country or is doing this or is doing a business. It would never be the same. So while you're on your waiting, how about you gaze your attention? How about you cast your cast all your burden, all your worries to Christ, who is the author and the finisher of your faith? Because at the end of the day, it is only God that would settle that matter. It's only God that would give you. Except you have another uh, source somewhere. Except you're praying and you're maybe you're double-sided. You're praying and you're going to a shrine or you're, you know. But if it is God that is your ultimate. If your faith and your hope is all encompassing in the mind or the competence or the magnificence of God. He will do it. He will come through. God will come through. God is trusted, can be trusted, and will always be trusted. What is your attitude or your approach towards waiting on God? Another thing I would like to touch on is while you're waiting on God patiently, while you're in the season of your waiting, enter your season of rest. Because it is in that season of rest that you would get to the end of that problem. It is in that season of rest that you realize that indeed I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Indeed, I have cast my burden. Even the Bible says, cast your burden, all you who are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. It is in that place of rest that you will realize that waiting on God is not in vain. Waiting on God for something. And this waiting we're talking about can be as long as two years, three years, as short as one month, two months. Like I said before, everybody has, everyone has different journeys, different waiting times, waiting seasons. This is not to say that you're not the apple of God's eyes. This is not to say that you're not God's favorite. This is not to say that God doesn't love you or that the grace of God is not sufficient. That's what we misunderstand sometimes as Christians. You can be favored you can be anointed you can be blessed but you still have to be in a waiting phase of your life as a christian now in that waiting phase of your life if you convert it to your season of rest you will realize that you're trusting god to take over to take the wheel if you allow god go ahead of you if you allow god to do what he wants to do in your life at the end of the day you're following your path you're following god's plan for your life you're working according to the ordinance and the will of god for your life and not yours but if as a christian you find yourself going ahead of god while in the waiting phase if you find yourself doing things your way then it's no longer god's way it's no longer you waiting you're no longer waiting for anything because you've taken the bull by the horn and you're deciding to write the 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 destiny of your life. You're deciding to take the destiny of your life in your own hands and whatever comes out of it. The Bible says in Matthew 11, 28 to 30, there's one Bible verse that puts me at rest whenever I feel like I am too heavy in spirit. And that is, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. It keeps ringing a bell in my spirit because if God gives you rest, why would you want to live in a state of unrest? If God promises you peace and rest in your waiting season, why do you want to stress about the things you cannot control? Because the truth is 99% of the time, what we are worried about, what we are hoping on God for is something we cannot control. 
It's something we cannot handle by ourselves. I remember a friend, thank you, Holy Spirit. I remember a friend of mine talking to me about how she was feeling depressed. I mean, I met her a couple of years ago and I remember having a chat recently with her and she was talking about how she felt like all well, her friends had gotten married, had kids, and she's, she, doesn't, she doesn't even have a relationship. She doesn't have a boyfriend that she would call, you know, she doesn't have someone to call a boyfriend and she feels like it's no longer waiting. Cause I remember talking to her about, you know, just being in the waiting and, you know, being patient and waiting on God, you know, for the perfect life partner. And she said, Oh no, I don't think I'm waiting anymore. I just feel like I'm not destined to get married. I just feel like I'm not just, Oh God, God did not destined me to have a partner or to have a happy married life, you know? And I'm like, okay, that is next level. This thought of yours is next level because a lot of people wait for things that are deeper than marriage, right? A lot of people wait for things that, in fact, some people wait for good health. They're waiting on God for good health. They're waiting on God for healing, which is even, which is even, I feel like it's even more intricate than marriage. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Everybody's problem is different. Everybody's understanding of, you know, waiting is different. But I feel like for someone that is waiting on God for good health or life or healing, what do you tell them? You know, so when I had that conversation with her and I'm like, girl, this is not the attitude you need when you're waiting on God. I know it's almost like you're giving up and there are times when your faith is dwindling. There are times when you feel like your faith is going rock bottom. Been there, done that. Sometimes I still go back there because I'm human and I understand what it means to be in a season of waiting and doubting, be in a season of waiting and, you know, having your mind run through whether or whether or not God will come through at the end of the day. But it's that, does that change the problem or does that solve the problem? Does your attitude or does whatever it is that is running through your head, does it make a difference? Does it shorten your wait time? That is, that is something to think about. Another Bible verse that strikes me every time, guys, every single time, is Psalm 127, 1 to 2. And it says, unless God watches over a city, a watcher man watches in vain. Let me read it in this translation. It says, unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. <laughs> Guys, being in the waiting myself, because obviously I'm waiting on God for something. In this life, I don't think there is going to be ever a time where you're not waiting for something, no matter how short it is. And this is what I tell myself every day. I am grateful for the little things, the littlest things, as little as just breathing, being able to take a cup of water, being able to hug my loved ones and tell them how much I love them while I'm waiting for the bigger things or while I'm waiting for the things that are supposedly big. So if there is nothing you take out of this video, just take that your attitude towards your waiting season will either make it shorter or longer. Worrying would not solve it, my dear. Worrying about it would not change anything. Rather than worrying, how about you worship him while you're waiting? How about you tell him how good of a God he is to you while you're waiting? Because in the banyanasi, ito kwano diki nankomel, ikadi yi mozo. If you thank him for the one he has done, if you thank him for the little he has done, he would do more. He would do more. And that is what I have learned over the years. Have you noticed that sometimes, <laughs> When you're thanking God for one thing or thanking God for just one open door, the next door opens even before you go on your knees. The next door opens even before you think about the need to even pray for it. That is the power of gratitude. That is the power of appreciation and thankfulness and thanksgiving. So I admonish you today. Let's all, because to be honest, I'm talking to myself as well, okay? I'm not even going to, I'm not here to preach that um, I'm the perfect one. Oh no, I have it all figured out. Girl, I have nothing figured out. Because in this walk of Christianity, in this walk of faith, we are all pushing towards one goal, which is to have a better Christian life, which is to be better, which is to love God better. Everybody's pushing towards one goal, okay? And... Life can knock you off and sometimes you question your faith, you question your, your belief, even if you're a deacon in the church, even if you're whatever you are in church, there are troubles and tribulations that come and you question your faith. 
So I'm not even going to come and preach that uh, path. No, we're all a work in progress in this journey of Christianity, right? So I want to just admonish you today. If there's nothing you take out of this video, take rest, <laughs> take gratitude, and take thanksgiving while you're waiting on God, while you're waiting for God to come through in a bigger mighty way, while you're waiting for God to shake your life and give it a brand new shape. Thank him while you wait and put your spirit at rest. Thank you guys for watching. I feel so emotional even talking about this because like I said, we're all waiting on God for something. We're all in that season. So I feel like I'm also preaching to myself, just even sitting down here. I'm also reminding myself of the things I need to learn and relearn and learn about waiting. And I'm just, I mean, Thank you guys for watching. Let me know if you love this video. Let me know if there has ever been a time in your life where you waited on God for something and how that turned out because I know 100% God doesn't fail. He never fails. He is too faithful to fail. Let me know in the comment section um, what you're trusting God for or if you've ever been in a waiting season of your life and how that made you feel. Let me know what worked for you. Thank you guys for watching this video and let me know if you want more of these videos, okay? <laughs> Thank you guys and until next time. Bye.